Now today I will show you how to create this. Um, it's quite handy when you have events that uh, occur uh, during the year and um, on a regular basis or non-regular basis. You just give you a very high level view of what's ahead of you. So you can select uh, any any starting point. You know, for instance, here I can put April if I wanted. Uh, put April and it all moves across. Um, I've uh, created four, but you can create as many as you like. And then they are showing here uh, what else. So I've shaded the weekends. And I'm also uh, putting a border for two days date in red here. So you can have two days date and an event at the same time. And I'm doing a very basic uh, check to make sure that we don't have the same two dates. It's okay to have the same two dates, um, but this way that gives you a heads up and then you can decide which is the priority that you want when you have the, the two events on the same day. So it, it's very practical. I like to use it for steering committees or financial reconciliation, for instance, to give me a high level uh, view of what's ahead of me. Um, so I'll just show you step by step how to do this. Now there's more or less three steps to build this. The first step is to build the calendar that will be showing here. And the second step will be to build uh, the event list, which uh, should be somewhere around here. And the first step will be a conditional formatting to show what we have on the event list on the calendar. So we start with the first step, which is the, to build the calendar. So here I've done a bit of uh, a prep. Uh, the starting month starts with the day that we have input here. Uh, so you can put any anything, it doesn't really matter which day, as long as it's the month that you want. For instance, here I could put 5th of April, it'd be the same thing. There you go. So this is, um, this is how it works. So here you start with April and you finish with March, which is 12 months. Now, the first thing that we do is, do is the first, we create obviously 12 uh, cells here. The first cell will refer to that date here. And then what you do is you just select, uh, so you format it, sorry, in such a way that you only show the month. So you, you're tricking the, the user into thinking that it's a month, but it's just a date. But you just uh, put a custom format here with three M's, MMMs, and I will show you only the month. The cell below, you just put the E date of this, the, uh, of that date, with a one after. So what does that e-date mean? That means that you just add one month's e-date of the date above and you just put one, it's one month. So if I put two here, that will be two months, but it's not what we want. We just want one month, there you go. And then we can just drag it all the way down and here you go. So you have your list of months. And, and in fact, it's, uh, yeah, in fact, it's the first day of the month here. So. Okay, so here uh, I'm extracting the month itself. Um, so it's the month of C4, the month of that date here. So this way that gives a, a visual here as well. So I just go drag that all the way down. So here you have the month in number and then you have the month in character. We build this calendar here. So the way you have to do it, you take 31 cells, of course, and then on the 12, uh, rows um, you will, will worry about the, the weekends I've highlighted the weekends here we can worry about that later on but uh, the first thing to do is to go to the top left cell and uh, input this formula here so what I'm doing here is I'm um, uh, as we've already built this which is uh, the, the same date <laughs> as this one what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm, I'm creating the first day of the month so here I'm doing the date date allows you to create a date so here i'm just saying this is the i take the the year and the month of this cell here and i'm just uh, put one in the end which means this is the first day of the month Up. and then the next cell i i uh, do a little formula here so the f i'm going to do this first all the way down so this will do it for the first row. So that will uh, bring down the first day of the month for all this month here. So this is step one. Step two, I need to bring this. So it, it's not just a matter of adding one um, because towards the end and you will be uh, going on to the next month. So I need to do some, uh, uh, to, to check some things first. So the first thing uh, that I'll check first if the 
cell on the left is not blank. If it's blank, uh, we uh, don't do anything, we just leave it blank. The second thing that I check is I'm checking if it's if we're still within the same month, if we are still within this month here. So if we're still within the month, then I keep adding, adding, adding. And if we are uh, uh, here, for instance, we'll be in May, so there will be a different month. So what I do is I just put a blank here. So in other words, put the first day of the month here and have to add until the month of the date is different. And yes, it even works in February, look. Okay, so that's it. And then once you've done one row, we just drag it down all the way down. Okay, so there is some conditional formatting that I've done here for weekends and for today's date, but we'll, we'll have a look at all the conditional formatting uh, towards the end. Now, step two, I believe we are in st step two now. Uh, I just um, creating this uh, small table here. That's a short table. Um, as I want to have it just under the, the, the calendar, I'm doing some merging. So here, for instance, I use three cells and I merge them. Merge the three cells so this way I have room for the date, otherwise the date will not show. And then I have four here. As mentioned, you can have as many as you like, but you need to put more formulas in the conditional formatting. Uh, I've selected some random colors here, which I hope are not looking too ugly on the calendar. And that, that's just four and four here, so it's just hard-coded colors. And here I just can put dates. For instance, here I have finance reconciliation to be done on those days, steering committee to be done on those days, holidays, and paydays here. So it could be work or not work, whichever uh, you want to put. Um, now, there is just, so here it's just headings and dates. There's just one thing to mention here is I have done a, a check here. So if I uh, go into the conditional formatting, I, I check the duplicated values here. So here I have obviously uh, one too many. I don't need this one. Uh, I delete this rule. So here I'm just selecting the table here. Uh, hang on, hang on. Just selecting the table. Make sure that all the table. And if and, and I'm using the duplicate value stuff, which I, I don't use often, but it seems to be working. So why not? Uh, format only unique or duplicate values. Might as well use the, the power of Excel and then you just format it whichever way you, you, you want. I put an aggressive red here. Um, all a lot of fun. Okay, so you apply, okay, and it's and this is the this is highlight. Hey, you have holidays on your financial reconciliation. Is that okay? Mm, okay, so you can have a look. And then when you do the conscientious formatting, you can decide which one is a priority. Ooh, tough one. Holidays or financial uh, reconciliation. So this is step two. Step two is easy. Uh, you decide your colors and just put them here. So at the moment, uh, it's just things that I've selected on this. Um, but like everything, you can change uh, this along the way. Now, the, for the big one, the conditional formatting, which is step three, I believe. Now, the, before we go there, at the top, I've merged everything here. We, we know we don't have months uh, beyond 31. So just selected a lot of cells. I'm using the same blue as it, just just uh, deeper, and I'm merging everything. So here I am into the cell, uh, which is, when is it, turquoise, turquoise, and, and I'm putting it quite dark. Now, I'm, I'm selecting everything, and I go under conditional formatting, and I'm going to create new rules. So I've already created them, so I don't spend too much time fumbling, <laughs> I can show you. So the first one I have here is today, and it's, um, I'm just going to edit the rule. Format only cells that contain. So that's occurring and today, I have today here. So it's it's beautiful actually. This is something that uh, sometimes we, we do things manually after until you realize that Excel can do it for us. So format only, that's occurring today. Yeah, that's it. And here I've put a, a red. Would that work if I put something maybe a bit thicker? Oh, doesn't let me do put anything thicker. So strike that. I don't want to put a color inside. I don't want to put a fill because then that will be a bit messy. I want still 
uh, to have things um, that are in the list below to be able to appear. So I don't want today to be overriding it. Now I have something else, sales content, that, uh, um, an error here. So I'm just uh, putting the, the white font. <laughs> I don't want to hear about it. Um, so it's just a bit of a catch all, all the errors that you could have. And here I have my four colors and I have my two gray ones. Now I have two, let's, let's start with the weekends. Um, so this is actually something that I've done, but I don't really need to, to do it now. I just wanted to have a uh, alternating month. Uh, so I was checking if the month um, is even or not to, to give a different gray. But what you can do here instead, just strike that, look at this, the weekend, the weekday, sorry, the weekday is greater than five. So, and if the grid day is greater than five, that you know that you are on a weekend and you do this. So if I, if I remove this one, I should be all good. Okay, so because uh, Excel has uh, day numbers, um, and six and seven uh, are Saturday and Sunday, I believe, depending on, on where you are. Um, but this is how it works on my system here. So I have the weekend shown here. So this is the way you do it. Um, if the day is greater than five, you put some gray. Now, for the colors themselves, four colors. First of all, I check that uh, here, there's E4, that's because that's a top left, so a top left, sorry. So this is what we always do. We always need to select the top left to check things out. So if the top left is uh, there is something in, in, in the cell itself, so here I do a count if of the, of the table here, count if and of this here. Um, and this is a trick that I'm using to check if, if the dead here is part of this. So I'm, do, I'm doing a count if into this. If it's greater than zero, that means it's found the date. And what happens if he finds the date? Then it, he puts this formatting here. So that's a, a bit of a trick. I'm just counting how often it is. If it's more than zero, <laughs> that means there's one or two. So therefore I can format the cell. And the only thing that changed is really, um, I'm checking here the, the T, which is the first one here, which is for the holidays. Um, I better cancel this because it's gonna... And if I go to, to the other one, for instance, it's a, it's a W. So as the cells are merged, uh, you still need to make sure that it takes the, the left, the one on the left here. So here, this is for paydays, for instance. And to do a count if on the W here. If you find something, then greater than zero, and that's done. So how are we traveling here? I think we are done. Um, just a couple of things to close off. I have put some very light gray borders here. If you don't know how to do it, um, you go into more borders. And then you uh, select a, a light gray here and you just put uh, borders across it. Actually here, I'm not sure if, if it's the best choice, but uh, I'm going to leave it this way. Here, same uh, light gray borders. Um, uh, it's a bit of a trade-off between uh, wanting to show the weekends and not having them overwhelm the grid. So this is what I came up with. Um, and this, the formatting for this, I'm just alternating two tabs of blue here to show to show this. Now, um, as I haven't created any new colors, I've been using uh, the colors that are from the, the theme color here. It should work. I should go be able to go into page layout. And if I slide the cursor across, that should be able to show me a wide variety of colors, more or less elegant, I have to say. But this one, for instance, is a bit in your face, but the one I like usually is the blue two. Doesn't really work in this way, but um, orange, uh, the reds also will be a, a bit aggressive. I mean, you can change it from day to day, I suppose, but uh, I, I like I like a lot of those. Uh, so the marquee, the median is pale colors. It works sometimes, maybe not as much here. Aspect. Oh, this one is not bad. Um, this one is actually quite good. I like it. A, a slipstream you can use. Uh, actually, slipstream, I might just keep it here. Okay, so here you go. So I'm, I'm, this is 
made uh, using the new Office. If you still under Office 2022, there's nothing wrong with you, but it just show you different colors. And and I have some personal ones here that uh, don't seem to be responding to treatment. Um, okay, so all the best with this. Uh, let me know in comments if you have questions. But I found that very useful. But more in the optic of something that the, doesn't happen too often uh, during the year, obviously. I mean, you could go a bit more granular and have a proper calendar, but I think for me, this is more, more than enough. Here you go, I'm gonna st uh, stay with this one, actually. Uh, but uh, there is gray on the, on the left. Hmm. Yeah, gray and green. Okay, good luck with it.